the bio digester for this video was constructed for a four bedroom house right here in Accra. And then we are also constructing the digester, which is the large family size digester, as well as the traditional sokawe, a small size four by four one attached to this particular digester. For this one, what we did was to have the top slot cast when it was being done. Then the rest of the concrete is what we use to do the screening on the floor. That was a day or two before. So immediately you come and you are going to set up the main construction or the main block laying or brick laying, which one that you're using. Then you know that you have a, a firm ground on which to put your mortar and then your blocks can come on it. It makes it easier. So we are using corridor blocks for this digester. We are using the five inches one, five inches solid. And we usually prefer the corridors because then it goes a long way to ensure the long lasting use of the digest. And then you get your location right. You get the exact place you are going to site the bio digester. You can do this together with the plumber and the homeowner as well, or you can give them your technical advice. That's what is going to work for the bio digester. What it also means is that where are the pipes coming from? How many toilets are in the house? How many pipes are coming from which part of the building? You need to know all these things to decide where you are going to place the bio digester. Some homeowners will let you know that you prefer the bio digester at the back and it's hidden. But maybe there's a guest toilet in front of the house. Is it going to work when you leave it at the back there? Will it come? Will it not fall under it? Will it be enough gradient for you to come for you? A gentle slope that will work for your biodigester. You need to agree on these ones before you decide where you're going to site the biodigester. Maximum feet is two feet. If you have to go, then probably you are looking at three feet. How many costs of block are you going to lay? What's the level of the house when the final groundworks are done how many inches does the homeowner or the architect or the groundworks do they look out for do they want the digester to show only two inches are they looking at it flashing with the ground or they are going to do some toweling around them so they prefer it to show and it becomes part of the design of the house you will need to know all these things so that when you do your digester you get a place for the top slab as well and then it can be hidden or depending on what you are looking for you can get it nicely. I also have to get the size of the digester right. Is it a standard size family bio digester? Is it a large one? What is the purpose for which you are constructing the bio digester? Is it going to be for a commercial use? Is it going to be for a simple apartment? Or is it going to be for domestic? I mean, depending on the type of building that you have there. You have to decide on that one as well. I have the video that explains the sizes of bio digester that you can consider when you're constructing a bio digester. The link will be up in the cast and you can have a look at it to decide the type of digester. The rectangular shape means that the digester has got about six feet on the length and then the width is two and a half or three feet and then the depth you're looking at two feet or two and a half feet so that you know your bedding materials are coming in, you know your filtration materials are all going to be neat and then it's going to work as you envisage it to work for you. The reason why you also consider the rectangular shape is because the type of simple or site biodegradable waste biodigester that we do they work in such a way that you have the outlet leading to the or the soak away or into a drainage system depending on whatever one is available to you for the wastewater and you are going to do a screening at the base just to separate the water from the human waste so the rectangular shapes work well now you have options you do have a soak away, which means that you are going to do some block work and have the leche pipe connected to it. Or you are going to have a soak hole pit, which means that you are going to have stones that will be laid in it. And then you are going to have some rubber or carpet on top of it. And then you are going to put back the topsoil on it so that it can be buried in the ground. There are conditions for having a soak hole pit, which means that the ground is good for you and it's going to work perfectly for soaking the wastewater 
that will be coming to the soak away from the biodigester. Your gradient is key in this situation. You don't want the water to go back. Is to lay the blocks. That's if you are doing it using blocks or bricks, or to use a prefabricated slabs and have them erected to fit the size of the hole that you have dug. When you are doing biodigester using blocks, we prefer you use the quarry dust blocks because they are firm, they have been pressed, and they can contain any moist or any water that might retain in the biodigester. So you lay your blocks. If you cannot do them yourself, be an expert in terms of a mason to have the blocks laid for you because it actually does require some technical understanding. But it's also your best bet knowing that you are a beginner in the biodigester construction. The simple one to do is to just lay the blocks. If you also have access to a prefabricated slab or you know how to cast these prefabricated slabs, you are also good to go. The advantage is that it means that your digester can be done within a short period of time. So you lay your blocks to match the size of the hole that you have dug and then you lay them to the level in which you want them to be. Considering where you are going to put your slabs, that's the filtration slabs and mm -hmm. the materials including all the bedding materials that will go on that slab where they are going to be and what level room is going to be left for your inlet pipe that's coming that's key remember the inlet pipe that's coming the inlet pipe is coming from the house and then the outlet is where the leche pipe will be leading to your soak hole pit or your soak away it's key you get this one right because if you do not get this one right the biodigester will be rendered ineffective and only after using it for a few weeks or months you are going to have problems because there is not going to be any biodegradation that will take place. Laying the blocks and getting it right is key for your biodigester construction. Dreamhouse biodigesters now. Thank you once again. This is a video about how to construct a biodigester using blocks and then connecting it to a traditional soak away. You can like it and leave a comment below as well on this channel. Now, what we are doing right now is to do the rendering for inside the digester itself. Rendering or plastering, as most people know it, means that we are covering the the blood with thin sheet of mortar just to make sure that the inside is firm and then it looks good and pleasing on the eye. The idea is also to make sure that the blood is equally held together firmly for long lasting use and for continuous use of this bio digester. All it means is that we have done the block work which in this case was training layers usually we do four coats but as i have explained in the beginning of the video what we are doing is to have the digester totally buried under the ground the homeowner does not want it to be seen so the top or the last block which we have brought it up above ground level is not going to be part of this digester is going to be hidden when the top slab comes on it, then it will flash with the crown. As you might see later, the video at the final part. The digester bed has also been done in terms of the screening. In natural fact, the screening was done even before the blocks were laid on the ground. We did the screening using the concrete. That came from the mortar and the mixture that we did for the top slab, which we had cast a day or two earlier as the construction work was going on. So ahead you can see is where the soak away is going to be and then the shear pipe is what's going to be connected to it. This is what the soak away basically was going to be like. The shear pipe is in it and then the construction of the soak away means that what we are going to actually connect for the wastewater to come and settle in. So ideally five inches solid block is always preferable and then you have your mortar mixed and then you have the block laid. It must be done by a professional. It must be done with the holes leaving the pores that will allow the wastewater 
to sip around the surrounding earth and then you must have a, a top cover that was going to have a clean out on it like an access chamber which will ensure that you can always have access to the inside of the soakaway you can see the inside of the soakaway in any given case during the rain season if there's a lot of water inside you can see the inside and if you have to have it pumped out it can be done but most of the time the amount of water that stays in the soakaway coming from the biodigester is negligible i've explained to some a few people over the years that the toilet water is really not your problem most of the time your biggest problem is not the toilet water your biggest problem is the grey water it is not the black water the water from your wc is less than half a bucket it's not going to rise up to the point of it overflowing and returning back to your the shape pipe so the more the advantage is getting a soak away means that you are going to guarantee the safer or the longer use of your constructed biodigester and it also means that you are adding value to what is it that you have done and you are going to have a very good return on your investment when it comes to biodigester construction so the next time you are constructing a biodigester ask for a traditional soakaway to be attached to the digester So we are we are now laying preparing the biodigester bed. We are doing the bedding material. The first of them is to put the mosquito net or the fiber net into the porous slab that might have already been laid in. As you can see, the porous slab is going to have the pores and then it's going to have the holes, which allows the wastewater to seep into the screening surface and then through the shape pipe into the soak away so make sure that it's tagging neatly at the sides you don't want anything to pass the side and enter the screening surface of the biodigester the fiber net or the mosquito net must be tagging neatly and then to make sure that all the layers fit in perfectly when it comes to what you are doing the understanding is also that when it comes to doing the maintenance work then this layer is what will be taken out from the biodigester bed, including the residue of what is left of the biodegradable material and then the human waste residue, including all the inorganic materials will all be on the net. And then those ones can be taken out from the biodigester bed. So it's key to always have your fiber net or your mosquito net as part of your biodigester construction when it comes to the bedding material. The next thing is to put your coconut fiber or treated coconut husk into the fire biodigester bed. With this, you are also going to guarantee that your biodegradation process works according to perfection and that is also going to make sure that the scent will be taken out. Usually what happens with scent in biodigesters is because of the wastewater. If you have done your biodigester such a way that the water is going out from the digester and then the coconut fiber is treating the human waste is there's virtually going to be no scent. It's highly unlikely to, for you to have scent because the scent comes from the fact that the water has been mixed with the human waste. So you spread the coconut fiber evenly on top of the biodigester bed. Make sure that it's enough, it's plenty. It's covering all the areas of the biodigester bed. The inlet pipe where the human waste will come from must have a bigger chunk of the coconut fiber. This ensures that whenever the, the human waste comes on it, then it can spread evenly across the other surfaces. Ensure this is done and then your biodigester is good to go. So this is the completed work in terms of the sukawi and then the biodigester itself with the biodigester bed. The inlet pipe, as you can see there, the shilashi pipe in the sukawi is what you can also see there. And then the biodigester is at the other side so there's a gradient coming in and this is how to construct a biodigester using the traditional sukawe and then having it done using blocks as well the next thing that must be done is to cover the biodigester bed with the top slabs these slabs should have been done earlier and be 
allowed to cure war before he take them. These slabs are done with fire rods and a mixture of concrete and then your mortar to make sure that it's firm and it has to be cast. And then you can put it on it and make sure your digester is sealed airtight. You do not need a vent on your biodigester. If there's the need for a vent, it must be on the building because the tonic scents that will come into the house will be coming through the pipes that have been laid from the bedroom itself. So make sure there's a vent that's needed is on the body. This is Dream House Bio Digesters. The next video showing on the channel is going to explain to you how bio digesters work and how you can use it as an option in managing your human waste.